So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing extremely well. And this is your very own mass code at this side. And today it is a time to solve the POTD. So it is closest neighbor in BST, our new problem. Let's understand the problem. So a binary tree, a binary search tree, and a number has been given to us as an input, right? So you can see I've already drawn out an example for you. This is the BST given to you. You can validate that this is the BST. Wow, how? 2 greater less than 5, 1 less than 5, 3 less than 5, right? 1 less than 2, 3 greater than 2, right? Not talking about 12. All the elements here, 12, 9, 21, 20, 25, all are greater than 5. Talking about 9, 9 is actually less than 12. 21 is actually greater than 12. 20 is actually greater than uh, 21, but 20 is still greater than 12, so it is also validated. And 25 is greater than 20, 21, 12, etc., etc., right? So how did I validate? I checked that right subtree of each node contains values and by values I mean each and every value greater than the node itself, greater than the node itself and when we talk about left subtree so left subtree of each node contains values lesser than the node itself right so by validating these two points i found out that this binary tree given to me is a dst actually right okay now the question says me that I have been provided with a number 25, right? So my first task the question says is, you have to find the numbers present in the BST such that the number is actually less than or equal to n, less than or equals to n. So if I do that for you, how many numbers are there which are actually less than or equals to 25? So 5 is actually less than 25, right? And if 5 is actually less than 25, are all these elements in the left subtree less than 25? How? Because left subtree contains lesser value so 2 is also less than 25 1 is also less than 25 3 is also less than 25 right okay now for talking about 12 is 12 less than 25 yes 12 is less than 25 so i said 12 is less than 25 and because 12 is less than 25 9 has to be less than 25 so 9 is also one of my uh, answer right now 21 is 21 less than 25 yes 21 is less than 25 and because 21 is less than 25 20 is also less than 25 Talking about 25 now, 25 is also less than equals to is also there, right? Is equals to is also there, right? Now, these are the elements which are present in the BST and are less than equals to 25, less than equals to n, right? The answer is the greatest among all these, right? So you can see the greatest among all these is 25. The greatest among all these is 25 right okay so my answer will be 25 so I have to find the maximum element less than equals to n right this is my sorted problem that I have to do this simply right now what can I do first approach I have already told you traverse the BST then store elements in a DS data structure let's say vector or an array sort the array now if array dot size is actually less than is actually greater than zero that is at least one element is present right it might be the case that n is actually the smallest element and it is not present in the binary search tree right any element is not present so that it follows this inequality right in that case if this is the case then sort sorted and return last element let me rub this right return last element because in sorting the elements will be appeared in the uh, ascending order and the last element is actually the greatest element right else return minus one this is my first approach right so what is the time complexity i have to traverse the bst so o of n for traversing now sort the array so o of n log n 
sort the array right so it is actually o of n log n time complexity and o of n because i'm storing it in an array so it is o of n space complexity right okay now talking about another approach so my another approach is instead of using sorting and extra space maintain a variable answer declare it as int min right and then traverse traverse right so i have got my root here and my n here right okay during the traversal what do i have to do so some simply what does my traversal tell me if root equals to equals to null simply return whether it is in order post order or pre order you just simply return if root equals to equals to null else if roots data is actually less than equals to n in that case answer will become now i have to find the maximum answer possible so answer will become max of existing answer and roots data and roots data right now after this my traversal will continue at same so so a uh, traverse for roots left with n and traverse for roots right with n pretty basic right pretty basic i didn't do any extra stuff i just use some optimization right some optimization but because of the optimization my pseudo code now becomes of n time complexity because of the traversal and because i'm not sorting anything and i'm not storing any so of one time one space complexity right okay but is there any other approach i can use see the maximum time complexity i can achieve is o of n right is there any other thing, other thing i can do so while explaining you the concept i said that if 5 is my potential answer then all these elements are my potential answer right so in my in my second approach what i am doing i am counting i am taking 5 into account if 5 is my potential answer i am th then also taking 2 1 3 into account right i can remove them i can remove them so what can i do is so suppose i start my traversal oh, let me change thing i start my traversal from 5 right i see that this is a valid answer this is a valid answer so instead of going left i move to 12 is 12 my valid answer yes 12 is a valid answer let's just say uh, the question uh, it is uh, 20 the value of n is 24 right let us say the value of n is 24 right so 12 is a potential answer yes 12 is a potential answer so if 12 is a potential answer 9 is automatically a potential answer but i don't have to consider 9 because i'm taking the maximum right okay from 12 i will move towards its right 21 is 21 a potential answer yes 21 is still less than 24 okay Is twenty one is a potential answer? Don't explore twenty. Move forward. Is twenty five an uh, uh, potential answer? Now the answer is no. Twenty five is cannot be a potential answer. So my previously updated answer is twenty one. So my answer will be twenty one. My answer will be twenty one. Right? Okay. So I hope you got it. And this is our approach. So what we will be doing is what we will be doing is so. Uh, let's say we are solving it, and we have got a root in our hand and an n, right? So outside our function, we will declare answer equals to, let's say minus one, right? Now, what I will do is while roots data is actually less than equals to n, what do you do? If roots data is actually less than equals to n, answer will become max of answer and roots data. first step right and because roots data is less than equals to n i don't have to explore its left side i will just move like this uh what do we say yeah root equals to root right root equals to root right now the potential case that we might be losing here is suppose a tree given to me is 4 5 Six and here it is a three, right? So if my n is given to me as three, what is this pseudo code is doing? So this pseudo code is actually evaluating four, right? Four less than equals to n. No, so the loop ends. The loop ends, and loop ends in such a way that I have got my answer as minus one. I have got my answer as minus one. So that is not done, right? That is not done. 
I have to traverse this also, right? I have to traverse this, right? And supposedly there is also a case that it is seven here and it is six here and it is six here. In that case also I'm traversing four, I'm traversing five. And then after five, I'm not able to traverse seven. So I will say that after five, move to six. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not exploring six, right? I'm not exploring six. So in that case also my answer is wrong, right? In that case also my answer is wrong. So we'll have to think some way that whenever my this node get rejected, I move to its left. I move to its left, right? So that is a homework for you. That is a homework. I'm not going to tell you because this is very easy, right? And I hope you have practiced BST on your own. That is a homework for you to go and search how to traverse left when this node is ejected. How to traverse left when this node is ejected. See, my point of explaining to you is because I think a coder is that just needs an algorithm. Coders should only demand an algorithm. So I have already defined an algorithm for you, right? Whenever you find this not approachable, traverse this, right? This is the approach. If you are not able to solve it, the code is present in the GitHub repository, right? The code is present in the GitHub repository. And today's code, I'm going to code this one for you, right? The space complexity O of one and time complexity O of n. Hope you understand my emotions behind it, right? And don't take me wrong, right? The correct code of this approach is mentioned in the GitHub, right? So let's check the code for today, right? The code I'm going to tell you is the uh, efficient approach, not the optimized approach, right? So what I will be doing is, let me let it open here. So I will be saying solve for root and n. I will define a function solve shortly and my solve will look something like, so void solve, take a node star root in 10, right? Now suppose if my root is equals to equals to null. In that case, return simply done, right? Otherwise, if my roots key is actually less than equals to n, in that case, answer equals to answers next or oh, answer equals to max of answer and uh, roots key. Now, to tell you there is an approach that I was telling you here uh, in, in the coding area, right? I was telling you here, right? What can I do? Instead of moving it uh, iteratively, I can just do it recursively. How? So if my this condition is satisfied, I don't have to travel left. If my this condition is satisfied, that if roots key is less than equals to one, I don't have to travel left, right? So in that case, solve for roots right only and send n, right? Otherwise, in the else case, what do you do? You say solve for roots left only because if it is not equal to uh, if it is as then equals to n, I don't have to traverse right so in that case same right and then at last return right and now I use the variable ans as an answer right so I will have to declare it somewhere I will declare it globally so my int ans is actually equals to int min right okay solve now if my answer remains to be int min in that case I was not able to explore any of the node which has a value less than equals to n. In that case, my answer will become minus one and I will simply return my answer. So hope it works. Let's try to compile and run it. In the meantime, if you're new here, do not forget to subscribe to my channel or oh, there has been an error. Oh, solve for root of left with n, right? Parameter passing is something I generally miss while using the DP also. Yeah, it is running fine. Let us try it for submit also. Hope it works fine. In the meantime, if you're new here, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and you can see because of your subscription, I've got a correct current streak of 107 days. Thank you for your support. Hope you liked my video and if you have any doubts, feel free to comment in the comment section. I will be happy to respond to them. Thank you for watching and we'll meet tomorrow with a new energy and a new coding question. Thank you. Have a nice day.